Hi, this Keurig B40 coffee maker trips a GFCI breaker as soon as it's plugged in. In this video, we're going to break this down, and it isn't easy to do, and uh, inspect it inside thoroughly to see if there's any hazards in here that would cause it to trip a GFCI breaker. These grounds are riveted, so um, we'll have to drill that out a little bit later. Do a couple other things first, though. Now we're going to inspect the wiring. And we're going to ohm this out. And we're looking for any obvious indication that something is shorted to ground. And, and one way to do that is check the resistance to ground from both the hot and the neutral wire. So we have no direct short to ground. There's a base, plastic base that kind of rings the bottom of this thing that's going to have to come out next. So there's two or three Phillips screws that have to come out. And this isn't going to come out till we remove that hose from the water pump. So first we have to retract and pull back that clamp and then move the hose off the pump. And now it's time to drill out that rivet. Okay, it's a T15 here. I'll bring it up like that. I can lift the handle. Okay, now I'm going to take off three covers. This long top one needs to come off for sure, but the other two that are on the front may not. Push it back. These two uppermost uh, screws under the cover absolutely have to come off. This gap on the left side is how we're going to be able to disengage that first clasp a little later. This front cover may not need to come off in order to get this apart, as well as one right underneath, but they're really quite easy to take off. Maintaining this gap with a clamp is very helpful. Here's the exact location of those three inner clasps. You know, with the long flat blade screwdriver on that clasp, you have to push it toward the outside of the machine. I tried and tried this way and I could not get it unsnapped. Tapping it with a hammer worked right away. It's amazing how thick and deep these hooks are. On this middle one, it's actually on the right side, I couldn't get a good camera shot, but I could see it and get my screwdriver right in position. Okay, 
The third one is right here. To flip it over. Flip it over, you can look down in there and see it. There's no way to tap this one like we did on the other two. So we're going to get a long straight blade in there, engage the hook portion of it, and then twist it 90 degrees. Okay, by twisting the screwdriver we got the final one out. There's some, a lot of densely packed components inside of this machine. Since the problem is the blowing of the breaker, we're going to examine the boards closely, looking for water damage, overheating, burned components. If there was one board that I'd suspect, it would be this power board. Now we're going to have a look at the main board, which resides underneath this cover. Three screws need to come out. We'll take out a couple screws and have a look at the back of this board. So there's no sign of water intrusion, heat, anything abnormal about either one of these boards. Likewise, this transformer looks good. And there's one more board I want to look at, and that's the button panel board. This board, uh, again, looks uh, high and dry and fine. These hooks that are on here make this very difficult to take apart. So we're going to modify them by taking some material off of them like that with a file make it easier if we have to take it apart in the future these are a shadow of their former overbuilt selves now so we took a fair amount of material off we're going to snap them back together and see if we can uh, get it apart Now we're going to file that third hook, the one that's by the push button, on the push button panel. This board's got a pressure switch on it, so there's a line on there that I can't easily take off. So I'll just file it as is right here. So let's put this back in the top. There are four screws. Two screws on this board. Next comes the cover. Three screws on the cover here, here, and here. Now this board, no screws in the board, just this cover. Two screws. I can bring this back over here. Tighten this down. I remember we had taken this out. Let's fit this back in. Okay, before we put this together, we're going to test it on a regular circuit. We've got the grounds back together. 
The owner of this unit was afraid to plug it into a regular non-GFCI circuit, so we're going to do that now. So all the electrical inside looked good, got a green light, let's check it out. Didn't trip the breaker and it's powering on. And it snaps into place nicely. And you could pop rivet this back in, but uh, I want to make it a little bit easier to work with next time. Pull forward. T fifteen. Next I'm going to check the current draw at power up on each of the three leads using an amp probe. When I turn on this power strip, I'll be looking for any movement in that needle on the probe. And the ground. The hot wire. Wire. And we have no detectable inrush current on any of the three legs. Let's brew a cup of coffee. Power up. Hooked up on the hot wire. 10 amps. Neutral. I guess doing a little cycling now. This is getting closer to uh, accomplishing the heat. There it is, it just reached it. Let's see what we draw with it off. So it's maintaining there. It's pulsing it to keep the heat up. That was the neutral. There's the hot wire. See the same pulsing. Brew it. So this unit will trip a GFCI breaker yet run perfectly fine on a non-GFCI breaker, a regular one. And there's nothing in here that we could find in, in a good thorough examination of the boards, the circuitry, no evidence of water damage, nothing whatsoever to explain why it would trip that GFCI breaker. So we're going to ignore it. And enjoy some coffee with it anyway, either on a regular breaker 
or with a, a plug that a non-grounded plug on a GFCI breaker. So thanks for watching. Enjoy your coffee. Have a great day, and please subscribe.